My name is Paul Tugud. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. I treat trauma patients, injured patients, and I also perform elective hip and knee replacements. Uh, on this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the recovery process that is typical after one of those procedures. So after surgery, uh, patients wake up in the recovery room, what we call the post anesthesia care unit. And I'm happy to report that most of the time, most patients' pain is pretty well controlled. Patients are groggy after surgery, uh, and it takes them a couple hours to wake up and feel more normal. Some patients will have some nausea uh, that will require medication. And yes, some patients will also have pain that we can usually keep well controlled with pain medications. After you're done being in the recovery room for a few hours, most patients will then go up to their normal hospital floor where they'll be staying for the duration of their stay. And every day during your hospitalization, you really only have two goals. One is to keep your pain controlled, and we do that with a combination of intravenous and oral medications. And the other one is to slowly get more mobile, uh, to slowly get up and out of bed. On the first day after surgery, that may just mean swinging your legs over the side of the bed. And then by days two and three, we're hoping that you're walking down the hall with the assistance of a nurse or a physical therapist. As long as everything goes well, most people are in the hospital for two to three days after a hip or knee replacement. So most patients will have their surgery on a Tuesday, and that means some patients will be leaving on Thursday, and some patients will be leaving on Friday. There's no written rule about when patients leave, it's really when they're ready to go. So whenever we think they're going to be safe to discharge is when patients go home, and that's generally, as I said, two to three days after surgery. So it's important to understand after hip and knee replacement that most patients don't have zero pain. However, it's also equally important to understand that most patients have their pain well controlled. And by well controlled, I mean that their pain is good enough that they're able to get up and out of bed and work with therapy on getting mobilized. Recovery after hip and knee replacement uh, is not a single point in time, uh, rather it's a process. So patients are acutely recovering for the first two to six weeks after surgery, meaning that it's very clear to them that they've had recent surgery, uh, they have some discomfort, they're not able to do all of their normal activities. Usually by the six to 12 week mark, uh, patients are feeling substantially better. Life may not be totally normal for them, uh, but they're certainly feeling better than they were acutely after surgery. And then between three months and really up to a year after surgery, patients continue to improve. The trajectory of that improvement is not as acute. They're improving smaller and smaller amounts every day. But people will continue to notice easily up for a year that their motion, that their discomfort, that their ability to walk is improving for that long a period of time. After surgery, while patients are in the hospital, everyone sees a physical and an occupational therapist. And these are the individuals that help you start the process of getting up and out of bed and returning to your normal activities. So simple things like putting on your socks and shoes, walking down the hall, going up and down stairs. These are all things that you're gonna work on with the therapist while in the hospital. After the acute hospitalization, most people will continue to see a therapist in some fashion and it depends on where you discharge to after the hospital stay. For those patients that go to a rehab facility, there will be physical and occupational therapists at that facility that will work with you on a daily basis to improve your mobility. For patients that are doing well enough to go directly home after surgery, they will either have a therapist come to their home and work on things at their home, or they may go to the physical therapist's office to work on therapy uh, as an outpatient. So people are always curious about what their function is going to be like after a hip or knee replacement and it's a complicated answer. Certainly the main reason we do these operations is to get people's pain better and therefore their function better and I do expect patients to, uh, to notice that postoperatively. So some patients may notice before surgery they have difficulties walking long distances and going up and down stairs 
And I expect symptoms like that to improve after surgery. That's, again, the reason we do these sort of operations. However, we don't change the entire patient. Uh, we just change their hip or knee pain. And so while I expect people to walk down the street more comfortably, go up and down stairs more comfortably, uh, we don't routinely take people uh, from uh, walking down the street and turn them into marathon runners. But their basic functions we do expect them to perform with, with less pain and at a higher level. After hip and knee replacement, we know that patients are at a risk for developing blood clots in their legs, and these can be dangerous. They can go to the lungs and cause significant problems, including death. Because of that, all patients after surgery go home on some form of blood clot prophylaxis to prevent this problem. For many patients, uh, for the first two weeks, that involves giving themselves an injection of a medication called anoxaparin. This is a medication that's very effective for preventing blood clots, and that's why we like to use it. However, it is an injection, so patients need to be mentally prepared for that postoperatively. The nurses will teach patients how to do that on the hospital floors before they discharge. Fortunately, it's a, just a two-week period where patients have to give themselves an injection, and after that, we usually transition to an oral medication, aspirin, for another month to continue to reduce that risk, but without the need for a needle stick on a daily basis. After patients are discharged from the hospital, uh, they of course have an incision over their knee or over their hip. Fortunately, very little needs to be done with that incision. After a discharge from the hospital, we usually just recommend that people maintain a dressing on it. They don't need to change it on a daily basis or anything like that. We usually just recommend that the same dressing that was put on in the hospital is maintained there until they follow up. Redness and swelling is often normal around a hip or knee replacement, but what is not normal is drainage. So the only time we typically worry about redness and swelling is if it's associated with that drainage, with the leakage of fluid onto the bandage. So if you just have redness and swelling, that's usually normal, not something you necessarily need to contact your hip or knee surgeon for. But if you have the new onset of, of fluid leakage, of drainage from the incision after you leave the hospital, that is something that we want to know about because that could be a sign of an infection.